And queen takes f3. Oh, what is going wow. on? Oh, this is going to be a fortress. I just don't see any hopes at all. This is very easy. Just rook back and forth. Taking chess to the next level. Wow. Wow. Wow, yeah. Nothing else to say. Wow. Creating the future of the sport. Introducing the Champions Chess Tour. Yeah, so hello everyone. Here starts uh, the Q&A plus AMA of mine. Um, yeah, I'm waiting for your questions. And in the meantime, I will play some game. Okay, so I'm playing against Fischer Firozia. Okay, d3, the modern treatment of the um, Spanish. Now, basically, I'm playing the trigger in tempo up because I believe that he would have to go d4 um, yeah, one day. So, yeah, I'm basically tempo up, but still, it might be slightly worse for black. Okay. Maybe bishop f8, but then bishop g5 is unpleasant. So, yeah, I will start with h6. Now d5 looks like a move. Yeah, let's try it. Okay, obviously I'm totally fine now. But the question is whether to play d4 or to exchange on e4, maybe I will exchange and then go c4. Okay, 
98, it's the idea to play 96, 94, or maybe 96 in bishop c5. I mean, I didn't fully like uh, like my knight on c6, so that's why I'm rerouting it. Bishop d3, bishop d7. C5. Yeah, I think I'm actually fretting to take on E4 now. Also, I defrase on the agenda. It should be free then. Can just take the pawn on b2. He could have played obviously king g2, but then I would try and c1. No, g4 is a bad move. Allowing me to jump on f4. Okay, now his position collapses. Okay, so let's see if there are any questions. Okay, so I can see many languages there. Unfortunately, I can't read. Spanish, so please don't write to me in Spanish. Yeah, so I've got a question from the Polish guy about my opening war, because I'm, that's, I mean, uh, that's not something I'm excelling in, in comparison to other top players. So yeah, if, um, I'm going to catch up with the guys. Obviously, I'm intending to do so. To do so, and yeah, but I mean, it um, it takes a lot of time. I mean, to to yeah, to catch up with the guys because they are usually much older. Oh, much okay. They're a bit older than me, so um, yeah, they just had more time to do it. But uh, the thing with openings is that uh, fury is all the time involving and yeah there are new ideas coming and yeah so it's never never ending job actually and you can spend all your life on it and still i mean you can very easily uh, yeah i mean you you may miss new ideas so yeah okay let's <laughs> let's get to another question um yeah, what's my chances against Wesley So? Well, obviously Wesley So is um, the very uh, the very strong player, and I I lost to him two years ago, in also in the speed chess championship. Actually, I think by now he lost only to uh, Magnus Carlsen and two times to Hikaru Nakamura. So um, yeah, definitely a tough opponent. Um, I think I'm a slight underdog, and okay, smart prediction says so, but. I think that objectively he might be a better, a bit better player than myself, but still, um, yeah. Obviously, I mean the uh, the big thing is not to get on tilt like I got two years ago when I was like losing games in like enormous, enormous amount of games. So, so yeah. I mean, okay, I have to prepare some ideas against him, and yeah. 
and then hopefully hopefully it would work um yeah so in general i think that it will be like almost like 50 50 match maybe i said i'm a slight underdog but yeah nothing terrible so yeah we'll see i'm also very interested in the final result of this match so <laughs> Okay, what resources, books did you use to learn? Well, actually, I have read like a lot of books. I'm, I mean, I'm still reading because I like it. And yeah, actually, I started with Kasparov, uh, Kasparov Saga. And yeah, but basically, I am reading, you know, like a lot of, a lot of stuff like Dvoretsky, I don't know, Gelfand, and then a lot of books yeah, written by good players. So that, you know, I uh, learn new ideas from them and how they approach the game. And yeah, I mean, actually, I'm also kind of, you know, uh, a book collectioner. I mean, I, I have a lot of them, like a couple of thousands, I believe. And yeah, I just, I mean, I, I just like to read just books like, it relaxes me and <laughs> yeah, it might sound like a bit weird, but yeah, I mean, yeah, in the free time, I often read some short books. So yeah, yeah, but obviously, I mean, the, also the thing is to improve is to play, uh, yeah, to play, to play games. So yeah, I'm doing it uh, yeah, very, very often, even now in 2020, when there is no opportunity to play in official and normal tournaments, I still, I still play a lot online. So yeah, and there are a lot of uh, great competitions online, including obviously this Magnus, uh, Magnus tour. So yeah, I'm very happy I can participate in it. How many languages do I know? Well, basically I, on an expert level, I can speak only Polish. <laughs> My English is kind of sucks, but <laughs> yeah, but sometimes I might be communicative and communicative with it. And yeah, I also know a bit, bit of, a bit of Russian, but I mean, it's far worse than English. So yeah, yeah, I, I, I mean, I don't really, I can't really speak with it. Like I understand a bit, but yeah, because it's a bit similar to Polish, but still, um, yeah, it's definitely, I mean, too low level. Yeah, good evening. Well, who is your favorite top grandmaster? Why? And who is your favorite password chess champion? And why? Um, yeah, that's that's a good question, actually. <laughs> um, well, obviously, I like uh, how I mean Magnus Carlsen plays chess in these days, and yeah, he's he's at the very top now, so. Why is that? Because, yeah, because obviously he's winning so much. <laughs> and um, yeah, I just like his approach. I mean, to, you know, to, to squeeze your opponents and yeah, to play long games without, um, yeah, apparently, I mean, accrual games, but still, I mean, um, yeah, after some time, you are just, you know, playing better and you win. And I like his approach. But now, like everyone is playing, you know, like 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 Magnus. I mean, they are trying to play like Magnus. And yeah, and from the past, like yeah, it probably would be some world uh, champion. Let me think about my favorite one. Um, yeah, maybe maybe I like him. I don't know. Like um, I like his games. Like a bit of crazy, but also not. Not too much, like <laughs> in comparison to Tal, I think uh, that he was kind of, you know, um, playing down to earth. <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe, okay, comparison any, anybody to Tal is not fair, but uh, still. Yeah, and I just like his games, like, um, yeah, an enormous vision. I mean, also long strategical plans. Um, yeah, obviously, obviously many, many great combinations, like against Reti, for example. So, yeah, yeah, that's my favorite world champion and my favorite player from the past.
Do you read chess books and analyze it on chessboard or rather keep everything in your mind? Yeah, actually, I, yeah, I mean, I don't need a chessboard. So like a performance, so uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I can do without the chessboard, obviously. Yeah, now I got the question, did you watch the Queen's Gambit? Unfortunately, not full, only three episodes by now. So, yeah, I mean, okay, I assume that for the four, uh, the last four are like the most important. So, yeah, everything is yeah behind me, <laughs> before, before me. Have I ever been to India? Yes, I've been once. And it was in 2014 in Pune. Uh, yeah, World Chess Championship under 20. That's, yeah, I quite enjoyed the stay there. I mean, it was a bit, a bit like different because obviously, I mean, India is like a very um, specific culture. Yeah, in specific country, but yeah, but I enjoyed, uh, yeah, the, yeah, enjoy, enjoy, enjoy the tournament and enjoy the country. So, so yeah, it was great there. What is the most exciting opening you play? Um, well, it depends what does it mean, exciting opening. Um, yeah, I have always played like uh, neither, uh, neither variation, so it can get like exciting. Um, yeah, but probably the most exciting game I have ever played, or at least in the recent time, was against uh, yeah, Alexander Grishchuk in Paris, in Grand Chess Tour in this, I don't know even the name of this opening in English, like knight f3, d5, c4, some, I don't know, hybrid of red, whatever, d4, b4. Yeah, and it was like Fury, I, okay, I knew, but didn't, didn't fully remember during the game. And yeah, it was very, 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 very remarkable game, I think, when I sacrificed the king to, uh, the, <laughs> the queen to, uh, yeah, to, to promote my queen's points. Do you often play blindfold games? No, I don't play, especially now. Uh, yeah, but I think it's a nice thing to do. And yeah, because you are like improving your skills of, you know, calculating yeah, without, without the board. So uh, yeah, very, very useful, I think, thing to do. But uh, yeah, but you can't, you know, you have to find the balances. I mean, as always with everything in life, because when you play like, because okay, the blindfold games are often like you know low quality. Because um, yeah, it's difficult. It's difficult. I mean to to calculate yeah a, a lot of variations there. So yeah, but I mean I I kind of like it. And uh, yeah, I played against my coach Kamil Mitai. I mean I used to play. Also also we played. I mean uh, Polish Polish team played. Uh, yeah, there were competitions in in. In this in this format, so yeah, definitely, definitely. I mean, I recommend it for almost everyone. How is how is my name pronounced? It's Jan Krzysztof Duda. Well, like a very difficult, I believe, for um, yeah, yeah, to <laughs> to say. So yeah, I mean, okay, Jan, Jan Krzysztof is incorrect form, but many people call me like that, and I mean, I, I can understand it. I don't have any any problems with that. So um, yeah, I mean, I understand that Polish language is very difficult and yeah, it's also very difficult to myself. So yeah. Where is the, where is Tal in the top 50? Well, I don't know. I have never thought, I mean, in such a way, like, uh, you know, who is the best, I don't know, 20 players, uh, best chess players in the world. Obviously, I mean, the top three is pretty clear, I believe, to everyone, like um, like Carson Kasparov, Fischer, in, yeah, might be in a different, different order, obviously, but I think that uh, these are like the biggest gen geniuses in chess. And yeah, I mean, it's difficult, diff difficult for me to say where 
where is Tallinn top 50, but I believe he would be like in the top 10 for sure. Because, yeah, I mean, he was he was a very like innovative player at his time. And yeah, I think he was yeah just pretty, pretty, pretty strong <laughs> as well. So, so yeah, even though he was only one year a uh, world champion still, I think he contributed to chess a lot and yeah, definitely top 10, but I, I can say like seven, seventh place or fifth, that difficult to say. Yeah, I like this question. What was the reasoning behind you playing the Sicilian Dragon against Wesley So when you only need a draw? Yeah, it was a situation in the Grand Prix in Moscow in 2019. Um, yeah, first of all, I, um, yeah, I have played against Wesley, I mean, earlier, so yeah, mostly with Black, so I knew that playing Black against Wesley is a difficult experience, obviously, and uh, yeah, I didn't like, somehow I didn't like my chances in Petrov, I mean, because Petrov was like, okay, still is like my minor repertoire, but um, yeah, I didn't like my chances, so I decided to go for something sharper. But the idea of playing the Syrian Dragon was that, um, first of all, he hadn't had uh, like many games in it. So it was, it was obvious that it would, would have been a, a huge surprise. And also I thought that, okay, that you may actually get a draw by force. So yeah, so I, uh, yeah, I, and so I had prepared a lot of, yeah, a lot of stuff there, but uh, unfortunately he played with bishop c4 when when probably okay this this variation on played is uh, incorrect i mean i confuse uh, i also confuse like variations because i thought that what what i played was in my files while in fact it wasn't so um, yeah i mean okay it's difficult because uh, in, ge in general i mean such games are in knockout format are quite difficult to play for both sides actually Obviously, it's better for the side. I mean, who who is leading in the match because in the worst scenario, we just play the tiebreak. But still, um, yeah. Somehow, I mean, yeah. I don't like. I don't like knockout format in general. And yeah, I'm not. I think I'm not very good in it. Uh, yeah. Still, I managed to get to the round uh, fourth round in the World Cup, but. And I lost a very, very interesting match against uh, against Geoffrey Jong. And um, yeah, but in general, I mean, I'm not very good in it. And I feel I'm not pressure when I'm playing the games such as against Wesley and back then in Moscow. Um, yeah, in hindsight, in hindsight, probably wasn't very, uh, very smart decision. But I mean, yeah, what what to do? Like, <laughs> if, if I, you know, if I had lost a game in the Petrov, then it still would be like, why didn't I choose something else? So, so yeah, it's always like, you know, when you lose, then yeah, you're just blaming your choice. It was probably not due to the opening that I lost. I think I just didn't mentally like could stand the pressure. So yeah, yeah, but it was obviously like a, like a not so pleasant and difficult game. And I mean, yeah, what to do. How do you think when we're running out of time in the classical game? Yeah, actually, um, yeah, usually there is obviously 30, 30 seconds increment. So, um, I mean, the say is not that terrible. I mean, in comparison to, I don't know, Breeze or some other format. But still, I mean, it's something different because when, okay, when you play, I don't know, Blitz game or, um, yeah, obviously Bullet or even even Rapid, when you get to the say not, it's still like, um, okay, it's, it's to me, it's something different because when you play the classical game, you play like um, a long game, yeah, like three hours or something, then the say not approaches. And it's like, you have a feeling that you can you know, destroy your own game with one move and just, no, basically waste three hours or so. So yeah, I mean, you just feel much greater, at least I feel much greater responsibility for what I'm doing in such, in such a scenario. 
Yeah, what I'm doing well, basically you have to, I mean, calculate uh, as yeah as fast as possible. In, you don't have you don't have uh, you can you can calculate like all regular lines usually. So yeah, you are just relying on your intuition or, or force or whatever, and yeah, and you just need to be a bit lucky and yeah, have a good intuition, I believe, because. Um, yeah, because it's very important to. Okay, it's kind of also. Of, it's good to calculate. I mean, uh, sensible variation in hindsight, good for you. Yeah. So. Yeah, but I mean, it's um, obviously when both sides are playing in say not it's kind of getting kind of random. So. Yeah, it's very very tricky. And now here in I mean in Norway, in Altibox Norway, there was even no thirty uh, seconds. I mean. Uh, so per move, so yeah, it was exponentially tricky for me because I think I hadn't uh, played in such format before, and yeah, I mean, yeah, you were like, I was like hoping to reach move forty, and then, and then okay, I I I reached this move forty and was just getting ten seconds yeah, per move, so <laughs> so yeah, I couldn't, I mean, I I didn't lose some time, but but still, I mean, it was. Yeah, it was very, very tricky and I couldn't like somehow get adjusted to it. So, so yeah, that's also, I mean, that's the reason I think of my uh, pretty, pretty, pretty bad play there. Yeah, but okay. But I think that in general, I mean, yeah, it's in general, it was very, very funny. I mean, funny, very like specific experience because um, yeah, because you like you know you are playing like very very professional game against world number one or two or or whatever, and then you know it's like uh, uh, yeah very, I mean normal normal long game yeah very very prestigious, and then finally and then I mean uh, the game goes and fin and you yeah you 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 are on time and yeah and the game starts to I don't know approach. Uh, Blitz, blitz phase, or even maybe bullet phase at some at, at some point. So it's like um, you know, just blitz, blitz skills that uh, that matters. I mean, so yeah, I mean, very, 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 very um, specific for me. Who was the best Polish grandmaster so far, and why? Um, well, I believe Akibaru Mishtein was the one because, uh, well, he was one of the best at his time. Uh, yeah, between the first and the second world war. And yeah, he was very, very, very close actually to reach uh, at the world championship match. Obviously the last guy at that time was skillfully like avoiding it. And so, yeah, so in the end he didn't, he didn't have a chance. Uh, yeah, but I mean, he was he was he was very strong. He was top three, I believe, or top, no, or maybe even top two. I mean, it, it depends on what time we are talking about. I mean, how strong Capablanca was, and um, yeah, I think he yeah he might be considered the greatest greatest pole. Uh, I mean, in chess so far. Yeah, obviously, I mean, Akibaru Mishtein was uh, yeah from Jew Jewish origin, obviously. Back then, there was a lot of Jewish people in Poland. So, okay, there was no Poland before World War One <laughs> at all. So, but I mean after. So, um, yeah, yeah, Kibaru Einstein is, is the guy. You can see there is an abundance of writing material, numerous books, videos, etc. What would you say is the most efficient approach uh, to studying chess, where to invest most time, and what works best for your personality? Well, actually, I have always been uh, like a competitor. Uh, yeah, it was always stimulating me a lot, and um, yeah, it was just working for me. Just working for me. I mean, I. 
I wanted to win all the time. So, I mean, scientific research was like not the most uh, important thing for me. It was mostly about, you know, yeah, being, being victorious, which means that you have to uh, yeah, rely on your uh, skills, I mean, practical skills. And yeah, I think that uh, in general, everyone should know, I mean, every chess player should know um, yeah, the, the history of chess. Yeah, the Kasparov uh, series is very, very good, I think, a very good starting point. And yeah, and then obviously, I mean, okay, it depends because um, actually, actually, I mean, I have always been playing a lot and okay, and you see when, uh, I mean, where, um, yeah, where you kind of, of suck. So, and then you improve in that, uh, in that thing. So, yeah, but I think that playing, uh, playing a lot is in, like important. Very, very uh, my, my, the main stuff actually for everyone, almost for everyone. So, um, yeah, I mean, obviously, um, yeah, the AI also, I mean, got strength that way. So, um, yeah, I think it's, it's a good, good approach. How should one improve positional play? I'm very bad at it. Oh, that's a difficult question for me. I mean, okay, I basically started my my career when I was like five, uh, okay, maybe six years old boy. Um, yeah, I started. I mean, to start uh, to study, I, st I started with studying uh, Rubinstein's game, and I knew them pretty, pretty, pretty well. And yeah, and I mean, it was like my mind superiority back in junior times when I was like screening my opponents. Yeah, in, yeah, it's low positional manner. So that was something I was, yeah, brilliant in, brilliant at. And yeah, how to do it? Uh, I mean, I assume you have to just, yeah, to study games of positional masters like, I don't know, Rubinstein, Capablanca, Smysło, Botfin, and so on. And then, yeah, and then you will, I guess, improve. Can Corona win the candidate championship? Well, actually, I don't remember the final standings uh, right now. Um, yeah, he's somewhere in the middle, I believe. And yeah, can he? I mean, yeah, possibly he can. Okay, it's, uh, he's not a favorite. I would rather, yeah, expect to win. Yeah, the candidates to to be the candidates won by Nepo or uh, Yavashila Graf. But yeah, I mean, it's yeah, it's very very uh, like very very strange situation when the tournament was stopped in the middle, and yeah, now it's like you know like two tournaments so yeah i mean i mean okay you played uh, you may have played pretty poor uh, pretty poorly in the first the first part, part but then you can you know excel in the second so uh, so yeah i don't i don't know actually i think that okay it might be very difficult for him actually to to win this but it's generally possible i mean from at least mathematical viewpoint. And um, yeah, but I would rather not choose him. I personally feel Grishchuk had the greatest potential, but somehow, some way, something didn't work out for him. He's not your idol. Well, that's, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's a nice question. Like. Okay, I don't know. I mean, it's difficult for me to say about Yushu potential because, uh, yeah, he is like, I believe, 15 years older than me. So, yeah, I can't 
really say much about his like childhood years and so on. Yeah, he's definitely, I mean, a great player. And yeah, we've had like a lot of interesting games. And yeah, both like, you know, <laughs> with all results possible. So um, yeah, I, uh, I assume that his approach, I mean, to have one minute for uh, yeah, 25 moves is uh, like stopping him actually. I mean, obviously he, sometimes he, yeah, sometimes he wins in that manner because his opponent also starts to, you know, like play, play uh, quickly and randomly. But in general, I think that when the position is very complicated and you have like one minute and your opponent have, I don't know, half an hour, then it's, um, you might, you might get lucky obviously, but in general you are in very bad spot. So yeah, maybe that's, that's the thing. Uh, that stops him, I don't know. And um, yeah, but I'm also wondering why actually it's the case. I mean, this Fino Minion, so I assume that he might be uncertain about something in the, or he just wants, I don't know, to, yeah, it's difficult, <laughs> difficult, difficult for me to say because yeah, I don't know him that, that, that well. Yeah, but obviously, um, yeah, a great chess player and, and celebrity as well. Yeah, got the question by my friend, Daniel. Which came first, the chicken or the egg? Yeah, obviously, I think that the science said it was, I think the chicken, but I'm not, I, I, might, I, might be, <laughs> I might be confusing stuff, but I think that it's somehow improved scientifically. And obviously I have no idea why and what is the case. And it's a great philosophical question, but unfortunately I'm not a, I'm not good uh, in this in this <laughs> in this live area, so yeah, I will skip that. Do you think the endgame books by Gavlikovsky and Schulz are still relevant and useful? Would you recommend them, or other are better in your opinion? Um, well, yeah, these are uh, these are like nice, nice, nice uh, books about end games written by Polish authors back in, I don't know, in the 50s, 60s, 50s, I believe. And yeah, I mean, okay. I mean, it's very, very difficult to, yeah, like to judge. Um, is it still relevant? Because I mean, some examples truly are, some are not because uh, like holes in, it, in them. So, yeah, I would rather focus on my attention on, I don't know, like more modern stuff like Dvoretsky, I don't know, De La Villa or yeah, Müller or, or whoever. So, um, yeah, but I mean, yeah, I've got, I've got these books and they are like very, very, very beautiful. And I, yeah, and I enjoyed them a lot when I was a kid. So, yeah, nice question. <laughs> Do I play other video video games? No, not really. Um, yeah, some, somehow, somehow. I mean, I yeah, I don't, I don't find them very appealing to me. Somehow, um, yeah. If if any, it, it, it would have it would be like some strategic games, but but in general, like I yeah, I'm not I, I'm not playing much video games at all so yeah and i just like don't like i mean like shooting games i don't know how to how to say it like because yeah somehow i just i mean i don't find it like yeah pleasant so so yeah Uh, how do you rate your own chances of beating Magnus in a championship match? Well, I hope I 
well, I hope I get one <laughs> one day because I mean it's difficult to you know to say about chances like of you know some potential situation in the future which might never be uh, never be the case. So yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, I uh, well, if I if I if I get to play Magnus, if I get to get if I. <laughs> If, if I have to play, my, I mean, if I uh, play a Magnus, then then I would answer to that question. What do you think about the case of Patricia Vashuk? Oh, that's, that's, yeah, that's very sad. I mean, I don't know her, to be honest. Like, I can't really recall the situation when I met her. Yeah, possibly, possibly I met her somewhere, but I, like, can't recall. And it's very, very, actually strange because I, yeah, I know. I, I believe I know like almost all Polish, yeah, decent just players. So, yeah, I don't know how did it happen. Yeah, I, okay, it's difficult for me to say. Um, like, it's very, it's very, it's very like, um, yeah, difficult topic. Yeah, but I think that, I mean, okay, especially this King of Eight move was like, too, too unlikely to be found, like you know, normally without any engine assistance. So, yeah. But I mean, I I don't judge because I'm not the one to to judge. So at all. So. What do you think about your match against Karyakin? I don't know which match. Uh, yeah, the outer man. Yeah, possibly the last one in in, in this invitational. Just, just.com. Um, yeah, I think it was like uh, very equal. Like we were both tired because we were playing. I think since six and a half hours, that's a lot. And um, yeah, I mean, obviously I was relying on the bullet, but uh, I mean, I was kind of tired. I was hoping to, I mean, to yeah, to to clinch as many games as possible to just to reach this bullet. Yeah, obviously the score in the bullet was like, okay, it was 6-0, it was too high. And um, yeah, I was like, I think I was at that point, I was very lucky because uh, I was like making moves and uh, okay, to my to my opinion, run the moves and they yeah, happened to be great uh, very often. So it was like, it was like, uh, yeah, everything was working for me, but yeah, I mean, obviously, like uh, Sergey is probably not playing very much of the bullet while I am. So, um, yeah, I mean, yeah, it was it was an enjoyable match, obviously for me because always when you win is enjoyable, no matter by how huge margin. So, so yeah. <clears throat> do I enjoy any other sports? I, I do. I mean, maybe I'm not uh, like, okay, I actually like uh, watching. Yeah, many, many sports. I don't do it very much because yeah, there is always like um, yeah the drawback of time. But um, yeah, but um, yeah, in general, in general, I think the sport is nice for like everyone. I mean, to have to have to have to to practice some sport. And um, yeah, I have never been very good in like team sports like football, basketball, volleyball, whatever. It was like, uh, yeah, I mean, I, yeah, I'm not, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not the team guy. I much prefer, uh, yeah, the individual sports, uh, such as I don't know, running, swimming, and so on. I, yeah, um, I'm doing this stuff and also to improve my chess. And um, yeah, I mean, it's it's great. I mean, to to be capable of, yeah, to to do. I mean, some physical activity because it's like very important, especially now, I mean, in times when people like are not moving uh, physically at all. 
in comparison, I mean, to other ages. And yeah, uh, yeah, and yeah, they, they see it a lot, like all the time. And yeah, there are these, you know, uh, problems like with yeah, being obese and so on. So yeah, definitely it's policies. How is your mindset while you face young players? And how do you face competition? Um, well, I mean, okay, now I got uh, used to these guys, I mean, Magnus and so on. But yeah, I obviously used to like, um, yeah, struggle mentally a lot. And yeah, it's obviously very, very like tricky and it just that you know, okay, and if I play Magnus for the first time, it's obvious. It's obvious that you will, I mean, be uh, very stressed and yeah, and anxious. So yeah, so I mean, okay, now 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 it's much better. I used to I used to panic a bit, but it was often like that. I kind of panic before uh, before the round, and while once I started playing, I was like you know getting getting used to the situation. So. And even forgetting about it, so yeah. But I mean, it's obviously, uh, yeah, a huge thing to play against uh, the best players in the world, and obviously, it's kind of always very stressful, especially when you when you are being caught in some I don't know opening, opening, opening stuff you don't know or something, and you it's possible. I mean, it's there is a fair chance that you, you know you know get busted before, for example, twenty 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 fifth move. So. Yeah, definitely. If you were playing the World Championship match, would you try the Polish opening? Or oh, that's that's a brilliant question. Obviously, the Polish the Polish opening, as far as I know, is D four B five. So. Yeah, I definitely would have, I would not, <laughs> for obvious reason, I believe. Yeah, and I don't know why it's called Polish, actually. I hope it's not because it's so, like, stupid, stupid looking, I don't know how to say it properly. And, um, yeah, no, definitely not. Maybe some of, I don't know, Rubinstein uh, opening or something, I mean, like, uh, variations he played. Did Iga Świątek, uh, victory at Roland Garros, inspire you to for your victory over Carson? Um, yeah, it was the very same time that uh, yeah Iga Świątek won her Roland Garros, and it was obviously very huge. Uh, yeah, and that day indeed I was playing against Magnus White Pieces, and I was happy to, to win that game. Um, no, actually, it didn't inspire me because, to be honest, I didn't follow this <laughs> her, uh, her performance, which, yeah, which is obviously shame on me. And um, yeah, so it didn't inspire me because I just didn't know about it. Yeah, but after, after you know, um, yeah, once once I won I mean, against Magnus, then it was like, yeah, I mean, I heard a lot about using a strong tech. Yeah, victory. So, yeah, it's definitely great that that she won. I mean, because now I mean, okay, there was Agnieszka Radwańska, a female uh, tennis player. She was, I think, at some point number two. Might might have been. I, I I'm not. I don't remember fully, like now. Yeah, but she. Nah, yeah, she retired like some time ago, and yeah, there was a huge hole. I mean, in Polish uh, tennis. So. And that's great. I mean, there are new, new faces. Okay, what, what do you think about the situation in Poland? Okay, I won't dwell upon it because I mean, Poland is always sharp too. And 
yeah, it's just, I guess, the Polish people nature. And yeah, it's, I think that, um, you know, that Polish are a very specific, specific nation because, um, yeah, we are very good when like something is wrong. I mean, for example, when we got invited many times, but I mean, I don't know some other countries, then we were like capable of this uprising. Um, yeah, all the time, like, yeah, it was, um, yeah, when something, when something was bad, then, I mean, Polish people had like this capability to unify and yeah, to fight against the enemy. But when there is no enemy in, inside, I believe, yeah, there are uh, many, 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 yeah, there are just fights, I mean, be, between, between Poles. So that's, 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 that's too bad. Somebody wrote that Polish before, first before it was played by Tartakovic and tournament. Uh, yes, it was played by, by Tartakovic, but I don't think it's called uh, Polish. It's like, uh, I think Sokolski or something like this as in before in the first move. Which is your favorite opening surprise which you played in a ga in game? Yeah, it's the one I mentioned already uh, against uh, yeah, Sasha Krzysztof in Paris. Uh, have you ever let any girlfriends beat you in chess to make her feel nice? Oh, that's, <laughs> that's a nice question. I mean, unfortunately, um, yeah, in that, in this, uh, <laughs> in this case, I'm not a gentleman and I don't let anyone win against me for no reason and yeah not not even draws like there are some grandmasters for, for example uh, yeah parma was known like to never win any game against against a girl a, a woman uh, but yeah i'm not that type of guy unfortunately Any thoughts on Nemjantino and his games? Well, I don't know that much games of his. Um, yeah, he's obviously known, I mean, to have a positive score against uh, Tal. Yeah, and he was also like extremely tactical player, with a lot of sacrifices in mind. So yeah, I think he was a yeah, very good player. I mean, but there were at that time many, many good players in Soviet Union, I mean, um, yeah, everyone, everyone was basically good at the time. So yeah, yeah, he was, yeah, he's known because yeah, his style was very, very aggressive, I believe. That's that's a that's a weird question. Would you rather uh, be able to swim faster than uh, the fastest fish or fly as slow as one of the slowest birds? Yeah, I'm actually wondering what what the slowest uh, bird is because uh, yeah, obviously uh, yeah, obviously flying sounds yeah much greater than swimming, but yeah, probably probably yeah, I would rather. Uh, yeah, swim very, very fast. I don't know. You mentioned uh, chess history and you should know it. 
how much also the old Indian and Persian chess from over 2000 years ago, early modern era, Greek or area, or just 20th century and late 19th. Well, actually I consider myself to be quite educated um, chess player. I mean, yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe it's too big to say, to say so. Um, yeah, but I mean, I have like, um, yeah, since since yeah my early early years I mean okay when I was eight for example I was capable of like I don't know saying all uh, all world champions in obviously in order in order and in which year they like won or lost their uh, matches for the world championship titles so yeah I consider myself and also I mean I got a very good memory I mean I got a very good memory at that time I mean clearly superior to my other uh, I mean, to add to, to, add to my uh, competitors at that time. And yeah, I was like, you know, remembering all this. Okay, let's say all diagrams, yeah, from Kasparov's, uh, Kasparov's book. So yeah, it was like, you know, I, yeah, I was considered, I don't know, to be some genius or, some, or something, I believe, at that time. And yeah, yeah, no, I mean, Okay, to, um, okay, Persian and Indian chess, that's uh, too, too sophisticated to me. I mean, I don't know much about it. I think that in Persian chess, there was like, uh, okay, Rook and Knight was moving the same way, They're moving now, but I think that other pieces might have been moving differently. I mean, I mean I, I'm not really into details, but yeah, and. Indian, Indian chess, I think, was like an entirely different game. Oh, yeah, maybe not very, not very similar to today's chess. Um, yeah, Greco Polario. I mean, okay, uh, yeah, the Italian school. I mean, I I know there is such a thing like as Italian school. Um, yeah, I have. I don't. I don't know. I mean, all Polario's game. <laughs> yeah, I I, I have uh, studied Greco's game uh, once for fun. Like all the opening straps and yeah okay early modern era what does it mean no i think i yeah, know a thing or two about uh, history of chess what were the emotions when you lost to Vichy in online olympiad in a must-win situation for poland and how your team reacted to it well actually it wasn't a must-win situation because luckily if even if I had won that game, we would have lost the match. So yeah, it was like obviously no no pressure at all. I mean, I I didn't know the score because I wasn't following. Uh, I mean, other my teammates' games games while I was playing. So yeah, I was like unaware, totally unaware. I mean, of the score in the match, but I yeah I assumed that it might be very difficult because we won against India in the past. Um, in the in the first match and yeah we also like were winning before against other other countries and I mean the second match was always very like difficult and you, you, I mean yeah we were losing uh, these matches so yeah so I was assuming that I have to have to have to win with white and yeah because otherwise we would be busted and yeah but I yeah I mean yeah I planned that terribly I was obviously a bit uh, yeah frustrated and angry on myself at that time but yeah afterwards it was like okay I just lost the game and I mean it's Vichy so it's not not too bad and I mean yeah I didn't didn't change the uh, score in the match so that, that was important actually I somehow you know got over it pretty pretty mildly actually How is how is atmosphere in team events? We were so close to winning medals. Yeah, I mean, okay, Poland. Uh, yeah, actually, we had only one success. Uh, okay, maybe two, two successes since the Second World War. Uh, yeah, because I mean, we won this. Uh, okay, we won. We were third in. Uh, we were third in uh, World Team Championship in 2017. In Hunt in Hunt and also and also now I mean 2020 Olympiad. Um yeah, okay, we were uh, short, short fair. 
and yeah we also were very close obviously to yeah to have a medal probably probably even gold in Batumi uh, in the Olympiad in Batumi unfortunately we didn't match our last match against India and in the case we we would have won we yeah we would be we would we would probably be yeah fats on, on tiebreaker I think uh, yeah but I mean yeah, it was it was obviously like very, very annoying because the fourth place is always kind of very annoying. Uh, but still, it's better place than fifth and so on. And um, yeah, I mean, okay, actually, personally, I couldn't do a thing. I mean, I was playing blind against Vichy, and I, uh, yeah, I was happy with the draw actually. So, to say the least. So, um, yeah, so. Yeah, unfortunately, I mean, okay, we were also kind of, you know, we were playing all, all top, I think all top eight teams. So we won against Russia and USA, I think for the, probably the first time. I mean, since very, very long time. So, yeah, I mean, yeah, it was obviously very sad to be for, for, for to do its sport. And I mean, you have to, you have to win because when you don't win, I mean, somebody else is winning and yeah, and you are. Yeah, and you are not winning in the end. How did you balance studies and chess? Was it tough? Yeah, actually it was. I mean, um, okay, I have uh, individual lessons, I mean, in in high school and uh, and before the high school. So it was kind of helping me a lot because I mean, it allowed me actually to travel to play chess on, on, on a pretty, pretty good level. So um, yeah, so, so it was like great that I had that opportunity. Yeah, and I mean, in study, okay, it was, I decided to study the, you know, the physical um, Academy of Physical Education in Krakow. So it's, Okay, it's not physics. It's not. I mean, very, very, uh, very difficult subjects like, uh, yeah, science. Which, which I mean, I, I wouldn't, I would, I wouldn't cope with that. So, that was relatively easier, easier to do so. And also, I was kind of, you know, being recognized there. Even vouchers doesn't mean doesn't mean a lot in Poland. So, uh, yeah, it was. Yeah, it was kind of, you know helping me yeah, and now I'm actually over it. I mean, I need to uh, defend the bachelor thesis and first to write it, but that's all. I actually didn't didn't like, I mean, the process of learning. Uh, I would r r much rather focus on chess only, but yeah, I believe that it's important to have, I mean, some backup plan in case something goes wrong with chess. If the Kamura plays the King E2 bank loud against you in speed chess, will you play King E7? Um, well, actually, I I don't fully really remember, but I think he played like like this against me in the last game in the last game of our match in 2019. I mean, I I'm, I'm not sure exactly right now, but yeah, but I think so. Yeah, and he didn't play King E7. Now maybe I I, I would have played, but I, I would play. I don't know. But um, yeah, but back then I didn't play when I but I played something dubious like some um, incorrect sacrifice so that you know I was like pretending to have in initiative quick development and so on, but actually it wasn't probably wasn't enough. I mean I don't fully remember the game now, but I think there was something like this, or at least it was my intention. Uh, maybe maybe it was it was correct for me, and. Yeah, in the end, I won that game, but it was like, okay, I was, I mean, lost in the match anyway, so, so, yeah.
Yeah, I, I would like also to obviously to thank all the people who are sending greetings from there. Okay, the last question, uh, the nice one. Um, how did you feel after beating Magnus on his home ground? Yeah, obviously it was like uh, very great. It was very, very great joy. And um, yeah, it was like the fun, yeah, obviously of, like of playing chess yeah, and training and so on. And yeah, I had a bad tournament prep to that. I mean, in general, it wasn't, I mean, my play in Norway wasn't that great, but I mean, that game sort of, sort of compensated. Uh, yeah, compensated, I mean, my, <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, my other games, which didn't, well, uh, didn't go that well. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, it was something amazing because like when you were, I don't know, in top 20 in the world, you like you know you, you suffer terribly when you are like losing i mean you always suffer terribly when you're losing no matter how strong you are but i mean it was like especially like uh, you know um, frustrating and in that case and yeah when i won against magnus it was like um, okay i mean still i was like minus 10 elo points and so on like a disastrous tournament but yeah somehow you know i've yeah, it was like all. It was like I mean, it. I mean, it was as if I, I had to win Magnus. I mean, to you know that I traveled to Norway and so on. Like I mean, it wasn't obviously the reason, but like it, it felt, it felt this way. I mean, it's, it was worth. Like I don't know if uh, also also in media coverage it was like amazing because I think that. Uh, winning one game against Magnus and losing all other games would be like much higher, uh, like media coverage or rather than you know losing two two games to Magnus and uh, like winning the whole competition. That's how how I mean it's working in Poland. So yeah, I mean I kind of you know. Um, Yeah, and I was like happy. I mean, that this very win like popularized chess a lot in Poland because um, actually I don't love to give interviews as you can as you can probably see. And um, yeah, but I think I, I I think it's kind of my duty, you know, to uh, responsibility to to I mean to promote chess in Poland because I think it's a great game and for yeah, it can be played basically by everyone, no matter of I don't know what. What's your age? Yeah, sex and so on. And um, yeah, that's yeah. That's why. Yeah, that's why I'm trying to promote just as much as I can. And yeah, beating Magnus was like, yeah, a game of of a lifetime. So yeah, definitely, definitely worth going into Norway. Okay, thank you. It's been over one hour already. Um, yeah, very difficult questions to answer too. And <laughs> yeah, and uh, yeah, I would like to thank uh, yeah for you for your for your time and yeah, and see you, see you, see you soon.